Okay, picking back up with uh, chapter 24, it'll be part two. I've already completed part one uh, of the book. God dictated to me, as he dictated the Torah to Moses, titled Isaiah 53 and the Day of the Lord. God also dictated, it was done at his command and direction, all the books of the prophets. He dictated Isaiah to Isaiah. Dictated Malachi to Malachi. Write this down. And, and that can be verified. The way the books go together. Um, it, it had to be a what? A master plan. Entirely the book he had written by, some, by a man. No man wrote of his own mind and self any part of the Hebrew Bible. It's all God's. And this is God's book. And uh, Orthodox Judaism uh, believes God dictated the Torah, the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, to Moses. And I'm sure uh, at least some of the reason for that is because M Moses couldn't have known this. The information of uh, Genesis, Deuteronomy, Numbers, etc. Just as I can't know the information here in this book that I'm teaching, that I'm putting on video, God has appointed me. Righteous servant Moshe is the only teacher he recognizes. Because when I'm here, he has a reckoning with and dismisses all of the shepherds and appoints me is the only teacher he recognizes. Primarily because I teach this book. If there's any rabbi out there, they need to know. They've been dismissed before God. I don't care how observant they are or the fact that I have a covenant of sin forgiveness. They're sin free, observant. They still do not go into the scroll of remembrance. And they might just be avoiding this, Jewish people that are listening. If, if, if you're observant and go to synagogue, you need to tell your rabbi, you know, there's some things you need to look into for us. You know, if you're not sure, who would believe what we have heard? It is difficult, I'm sure. But that's why those words are there. Have heard what we had never seen. Or see what we had never heard from 52, and there's some of it in 53. <clears throat> it's supposed to be like this. Nobody really knows. Even, even Rambam said that. You know, we, we don't know if Elijah comes before or after David. Because the prophets weren't clear on that. Well, they weren't clear on a lot of things. Any event, picking up from 24, chapter 24, verse 1, Jews for Judaism, exaltation, in Isaiah 53, in the day of the Lord, God's new book. They're in the book, and he started to tell me, I'm not taking them out. And they're going to get published, and they're going to be read, and these videos uh, get more views every day. I'm going to read the last paragraph from part one. The righteous servant bearing up to this fiber finding is bearing the illness and pain of unrighteousness of the Jewish people to be recognized as a prophet of God. That in and of itself will draw many of the Jewish people back to Judaism, recounsel the family members one to the other, and make the many righteous in this day of the Lord. This is the commentary of Jews for Judaism on verses 53, uh, chapter 53, verses 4, 5, and 10. Not covering all of 53, just what we just covered and now this. And they call it on their website, 
Jews for Judaism, Isaiah 53, verse by verse, followed by my commentary on the same verse and a response to Jews for Judaism. So this is Jews for Judaism, 53, verse 4, from whatever book they use. But in truth, it was our ills that he bore and our pains that he carried. But we had regarded him diseased, stricken by God, and afflicted. And I have been, all three of those. The kings, here's the commentary. The kings, that would be the leaders of every nation of the earth. I don't know who, what, he doesn't ever define the kings, but he uses them in just about every comment. The kings now realize that their spiritual assessment of the servant was completely backward. I think there's a lot of leaders out there who care less about spiritual assessment. During the time of the servant's lowliness, those who knew him believed that his constant affliction proves that he is spiritually deformed. Otherwise, why would this nation be singled out for God's wrath over any other? I guarantee you, there's been plenty of nations who thought they were the subject of God's wrath. <laughs> now, particularly the ones that aren't still here. But now, with the servant's exaltation, it's not in the Hebrew Bible. I'm going to say it every time. And it has, and the exalt used in chapter Isaiah 52, verse 13, has no application to world exaltation. It has to do with the building of the second temple. That's the return of the 13 tribes by decree of Cyrus of Persia, a Gentile Moshe. <clears throat> Uh, to build God's house in Jerusalem. That's what it, it's, that's what it is. That's what that's about. Prophecy fulfilled. Everybody's happy about it. And then chapter 53 begins. And that's where you find the word exalt. But there's nothing about world exaltation. Nothing about the kings. As a matter of fact, read the last couple of Psalms about, the, <laughs> about chaining the kings up and whatnot. They realize, these kings, that the servant was not more wicked than them, but more righteous. <laughs> Their assessment of the servant is reversed because they come to a true understanding of God's plan throughout history. <laughs> Comment? With the restoration of Israel, I don't know where that is. <laughs> is that in the Hebrew Bible? <laughs> he said, keep reading. With the restoration of Israel and God's glory coming to dwell in the Jerusalem temple, the nations of the world will experience true sanctity and a real connection to God. Let me ask you this. God's purpose that might prosper in 53, Jews for Judaism, is to return to his temple. And it only prospers if his messenger clears the way. That is Elijah. But if you're the righteous servant, why haven't you built a temple for God to return to? There are four righteous servants to come. Six prophecies unfulfilled in the Hebrew Bible in this day of the Lord, and I complete them all. Four righteous servants to come. One description, implicitly and explicitly, he's all for, and I'm the man described, prophet like Moses, Moshe, and Elijah. To answer Rambam, it's not a matter of who comes before who, David and Elijah, they're the same person. So I'm to clear the way, 
And the biggest obstacle I have is Jews for Judaism and their false teaching. And Toby is singing with his 66,000 followers. Those of that 66,000 interested in 53 believe it's Israel, and you can't get them to think otherwise. I don't know how many Jews for Judaism has. An obstacle to God in this his day from false teaching. You can't possibly believe this is going to happen. Two billion Christians are going to disavow Jesus. Two billion Muslims are going to disavow Allah and come and worship with the Jews saying, you've been right about God all along. He's the God of Israel. You to think that's going to happen. I'd love to hear your answer. You can show a Christian the greatest lie and deceit in the history of mankind, according to God. On the Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. And, uh, and there's a video on that. And they'll still look straight at you and say, praise Jesus. <laughs> I say, well, look, he went in an his land. He can't be sacrificed. His sacrifice did nothing. Praise Jesus. I'm sent for him going to heaven. I'm going to go be with Jesus. <laughs> I don't think you can get the many to change their mind, much less two billion. And their assessment of the sermon is reversed. How do you know these things? That's, none of this is in the Bible. You people at Jews for Judaism are going around down, just making things up. And being a hindrance to God himself. But that's okay. I mean, you've been dismissed. If you want to uh, get back in my standing with God and make the scroll of remembrance and see the Jewish heaven, you're going to have to teach this book. And that means you have to teach chapters 23 and 24. That's exaltation and Tobias' guilt offering. And he says he's not taking them out. With the restoration of Israel and God's glory coming to dwell in Jerusalem temple, the nations of the world will experience true sanctity and a real connection to God. How about China? There's one third of the people of the world. What are they going to do again? Most of them probably don't even know what a Jew is. Much less a God of Israel. They got their own gods. I guess, I guess one third of the population, the Chinese, the Asians, they got to disavow whatever they believe in today. <laughs> the world's going to experience true sanctity. Y'all don't know who God is at all. They will realize, I'm talking to Jews for Judaism, they will realize that many of their activities were actively preventing, oh, somebody else is being a hindrance? Who is this? They, the kings, will realize that many of their activities were actively preventing God's presence from being manifest in this world. <laughs> nice setup. Even though they had considered many of their, these activities to be righteous and godly. In order for God's presence to be revealed to the, on his representation, his presence is within me. Just like it was with Moses. All the prophets. David. Uh, a teaching y'all. Uh, no rabbi or sage has a clue about any of this stuff I'm teaching. And I most certainly didn't make it up of my own. I was an atheist for 50 years. I had never read the Bible when God spoke to me at age 50. Though he was with me from birth to orchestrate a miserable life of suffering, grievous injuries, familiar with disease, crushed with disease, afflicted at birth, Afflicted with cancer later on. Actively preventing his presence. 
That's true for Judaism and uh, Toby the singer, that's for sure. In order for God's presence to be revealed in this world, there needs to be obedience and humility toward God. Where's that? Where is that? I come, he comes with a covenant of sin forgiveness to return to his temple you haven't had built, Mr. Righteous Servant Person. <coughs> That's the purpose that might prosper. Well, it's the only purpose we got. You go to Malachi 3. I, I'm coming back. Send my messenger before me to clear the way. And the angel of the covenant you desire, sin forgiveness from Jeremiah 31, 31, is already on the way. Here right now. God says it goes into effect when these books are published. The obedience does not have to be perfect because God doesn't demand from his creation that which they cannot deliver. But it needs to be accepting of God's sovereignty to the degree that humans are capable. So a little sin is okay, I see. Well, anyway, he's coming with sin forgiveness, so that's all bogus. Basically, it's just y'all come back, and I'll come back. He said, no, I didn't come and stop the Holocaust. You shouldn't have been over there. You could have come back to your land long before. But you did get a good lesson. The Jews cannot be separated in different countries and remain safe. Which is why we had the state of Israel. But he had nothing to do with that. That's all it's been. Y'all come back. And they did. It began in 48. Well, he came to me in 1957. So it was just starting to bloom again. Jeremiah 31, see the time is coming, land will bloom again. See, uh, ruined cities will be restored. See the time is coming, Jerusalem will be rebuilt. See the time is coming, I make a new covenant with you. Well, that's today. Well, it's been going, I mean, I'm sure it's been a beautiful country for many years now. It's been 70 years since it was formed. The 1948 is when the day of the Lord began. And he had to have me go through the life I've been through. And now he's been with me 16 years in this fire of refinement. Which I'm so tired of, I can't even begin to explain it. It's not over till I get to Israel. And I can't make, I'm, well, views, that's about all i got. And critical comments. And for the reason God says. People will despise you simply for saying you're the righteous servant. Partly because of the t false teachings out there and partly because people just can't believe it. And, and, and they don't know how to believe you. Well, this is the belief. This is the proof. He gave Moses three proofs. He gave me three proofs. And this is the biggest one of the three. That properly explaining 53, because you don't know about the fire of finance, you can find it in Job, Jonah, most particularly Ezekiel, the key to 53. And now you find that it's in 53 too, uh, 53 also, although not defined as it is in Ezekiel. Oh, it is part of the Hebrew Bible. Uh, there's great reason to believe it that Moses went through it. I don't know if it was two weeks or 40 years. It's a running joke around. Between me, God, and the angel of his presence, the Holy Spirit, who is the person. <laughs> and he's right there. Since all mankind, here we go again. Since all mankind benefits from God's presence. Go tell the Chinese there. Being manifest in this world, it would be appropriate that all of mankind participate in the work of preparing a resting place for God's presence. <laughs> the way that this sanctuary 
for God will be prepared would necessitate that mankind purify its collective heart. You can't prepare his sanctuary without, in order to fulfill this dwelling place for God, mankind would need to strive to achieve humility towards the God of Israel and to accept the God of Israel's sovereignty. World exaltation that will never happen, never has happened. It's not why the Jewish people were formed. They were formed to test the world. The world will always hate you. And I know why you teach it. Because it's what they want to hear. It's just like the story of Jesus. It's what the Gentiles wanted to hear. And it's just story. And your world exaltation, Jews for Judaism, is a made up story also. But it puts your those that are listening to you in a good mood, follow you, like what you do, hit the like button, and uh, I'm sure it helps with donations too, doesn't it? A hindrance to God. The world is the hindrance. Now, false teachings, Isaiah 53, is all of the people Israel gathered at one time, which has only happened two times, at Oreb, and in Jerusalem by the 13 tribes who returned. Not 10. There's a video on it. But instead of putting the risk on the shoulders of all mankind, God placed this task on the shoulders of his servant, who has not done it. Where's the temple? You realize if he came back in any of these last 70 years, and didn't need his representation, and they didn't have to spend 16 years getting me ready. Other destruction could have come to Israel, could happen today. I don't know when you're going to get tired of waiting on them. The servant's not responding to God's book and his representation, his man and divine beings. Where I go, they go. Right now, all I go is in this room. They don't get to, we don't even hardly go out. Religious people, again, I was an atheist for 50 years. And I am just, my mind is boggled by how much things are just made up. And it's not just this 53, it's everywhere, it's ram bam. Two chapters in the mission of Torah on the laws of King Moshe. None of which you, can, you can't find one of them in the Hebrew Bible. Clearly, he just made it up. Unless y'all think God spoke to him. Now, why would you believe that? Oh, because it's probably where you get world exaltation, too. Huh? No, don't go into all that. No. Okay, let's just read and get done with this. It's long. Instead of purifying the collective heart of all mankind, you think he could do that? He, he doesn't have a magic wand. He never, he says, I could prepare such a world, but I didn't. This world's perfectly what I wanted. And the things y'all are saying I'm going to do, I'm not going to do. And if you think Moshe can do it, you that's a lie. How am I going to perfect the world? How is he going to perfect the world? God's speaking. Yeah, I can speak right through him. Yeah, you tell your Jewish friends that too. Either that or, what, Keith's putting on an incredible hoax. Who, <laughs> who can even come up with this? Let's say you wanted to pretend you were the righteous servant and you weren't. You really think I could come up with all this? I did 50 years. Never discussed religion with my friends. Didn't even know when God spoke to me at age 50. Not having read the Bible, really. I, I didn't know Jesus died for sins, supposedly. Um, that there was a rift between Judaism and Christianity. I didn't know what Judaism was. And yet here I've got a whole book full of, <laughs> i got the top ten fallacies and false teachings of Judaism. I've got all kinds of things they don't know. 
The Holy Spirit is an angel and he's a person. And that's, that, that's my proof as Elijah, my knowledge of heaven and the creation of angels, uh, and even Adam and Eve, what that means. I know he says he just did it from the dust, but again, got to know how to read the Bible. You got to know why, it, 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 that it was written in antiquity first, for antiquity first, in the early middle eight, medieval ages. Jesus <laughs> Julian, they must be seers that can see the future. The nations will walk by that light. Wait a minute, I gotta read this little thing. God chose to purify the collective heart of his servant Israel, because he wasn't gonna do it with the world. And his servant will then shine the truth towards the rest of mankind. The nations will walk by that light, the entire world, because of the Jews being a great light. And partake of the goodness of God. Isaiah 60, verse 3. And the way that God chose to purify the heart of his son is through suffering. That's true. That's what the fire refinement is. Suffering makes you stronger, according to God. <laughs> I, I don't need to be any stronger, as much as I say. Let them hurt my feelings. That's Isaiah 48, verse 10. With the exaltation of the servant, the world, the nations, the Gentiles, will realize <laughs> that it was through the servant is that every day, every human being in the world? You know, Chinese are Christian or uh, Gentiles too. Eskimos. <laughs> I just learned about religious people and I, I just shake my head. I, I thought I had a better opinion, you know. Actually, I never even really thought about them. I got shot through the abdomen from two feet away in the right side and went through my bladder and straight across backwards to, I mean to the left side and lodged in my left butt up and it was eight hours the, the, the amount of time Jesus was on the cross on the, his one day of suffering and it took eight hours by ambulance to get to the hospital that could help me and oh and not one time did I think about God no, if there is a God or a promise I'll never sin again if you don't let me die. Because I was clearly dying. To it, to it. And God says he orchestrated that. So I could be the man of suffering familiar with disease. It's the suffering to get cut shut, I can promise you. This is one day out of my life. I got, I got, I think we listed about 16 different injuries. With the, that God was pretty much responsible for all. He takes credit for all of them. I, I don't know about a few of them. With the exaltation of the servants, the nations will realize that it was through the servant that God has accomplished his purpose in the world for the benefit of all mankind. God, this is God using me to shake his head. The suffering that the servant bore should have been born by all mankind. And if anything, the nation should have carried the brunt of the suffering because it was their wickedness that was more directly standing in the way of God's purpose for the world. So you know God's purpose for the world. Try it here. In saying 53, is all of the people, all of the Jewish people gathered as one man, Israel. Well, that's when this would have happened. This exaltation. And Moshiach would have been there, but of course he wasn't. In Jerusalem, with the 13 tribes to build the second temple. It's the only time they ever gathered. It's the second time and the last time they ever gathered. And it couldn't have possibly happened today. I guess with the way you're talking, you could imagine.